one. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Breakfast with the Silvers. <laughs> She's so fun. Where am if I you today? guys only knew, if you only knew. X. So you're going to be in Acts 8, X 1 8. through 13. Oh. Um, today's devotional is called Paul's Conversion and Baptism, Part 1. From Acts 9, 17 and 18. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road after you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, we had an immediate the other day too. Immediately, there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Okay. And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles, and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched of the people, bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all have heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the greatest power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Oh, one more. <laughs> then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Paul was probably the greatest persecutor that the early church had. Paul hated the Christians. He had made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Acts 8.3 in Acts 8, 9, we read that he was breathing out threats and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. He was on his way to Damascus for the purpose of destroying the church there. Verses 1 and 2. How did God deal with such a person? We would have dealt with him in judgment. God dealt with him in mercy. Oh, the wondrous love of God. He loved the believers at Damascus, and the way he preserved them was through the salvation of the man who intended to scatter and destroy them. He shows mercy to all. If we would just realize that we are alive today only through the grace of our God, more and more I see that it is through the grace of God that I am preserved every day. It is when we realize the goodness of God that we are brought to repentance. Here was Saul with letters from the high priest hurrying to Damascus. He was struck down and he saw a light, a light that was brighter than the sun. As he fell speechless to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? And the answer came back, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. And Saul cried, Lord, what do you want me to do? Acts 9, 4 through 6. I do not want to bring any word of condemnation to anyone, but I know that many have felt very much the same way toward the children of God as Paul did, especially toward those who have received Pentecostal baptism. I know that many people tell us you are mad, but the truth is that the children of God are the only people who are really glad. We are glad inside and outside. Our gladness flows from the inside. 
God has filled us with joy inexpressible and full of glory. 1 Peter 1.8 We are so happy about what we have received that if it were not for the desire to keep a little decorum, we might be doing strange things. This is probably how the Apostle Paul felt when, referring to himself and his co-workers, he said, We are beside ourselves. 2 Corinthians 5.13 we are beside ourselves in the Lord. This joy in the Holy Spirit is beyond anything else. And this joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah 8.10 Thought for today, our God delights to be merciful and his grace is granted daily to both sinner and saint. Thanks for joining us. See you tomorrow.